So my name is Nikolai Pirienko. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO at Taylor & Hart. We're an online retailer and we specialize in custom designed engagement rings to allow customers to experience a much more personal proposal than just getting a ring off the shelf. Uh, it's a very special product for really a special moment in their lives. I think of myself as being someone very international, a global citizen. I, I was born in Bulgaria, uh, I grew up in South Africa, lived there for 15 years and uh, I moved to the UK to study and while I was studying I got involved in quite a few different societies and started a few companies, just small digital projects but it was really when Facebook was growing and I was really involved in social media and the start of social media and one of my friends from school reached out to me, he'd started a, a wholesale diamond business in South Africa and he thought it was a, a really good fit, so he said look you've got these skills and expertise you're developing in, uh, in digital media and he had a supply chain uh, of ethically sourced diamonds and he had a way of creating beautiful jewels and we thought there was an opportunity of um, combining our skill sets and it was funny because at the time I was also um, considering getting engaged to my now wife who was looking for this ring uh, and he helped me to design it so I was kind of like customer number one to the business and uh, since then it's been a really amazing adventure of uh, growing this business. So I've always thought that I would be an entrepreneur, uh, I've been selling things and doing deals at school whether it was trading Marvel cards or uh, doing all kinds of things like that since I was very little. Um, I went to university simply because I thought that was a great opportunity to, to meet people, uh, like-minded people and also to, to learn a bit. But I always knew that following university my, my path wouldn't be the standard graduate job. Uh, the thing that really motivates me about being an entrepreneur is this, well two things really. The first is that for me, that's my expression of creativity. Uh, it's always about ideas and seeing those ideas come to life. I wasn't creative uh, in the sense of drawing or music or anything like that. So, but I think everyone is creative just in different ways and that's my format for expression. Uh, but also the, the freedom and the empowerment to live your life, uh, to take control of your life and live it as you please. It's obviously very, very difficult to be an entrepreneur, but at the same time, the, the amount of freedom you have is, is unparalleled. You know, when thinking about entrepreneurship, there's a, there's, a, there's a metaphor I really like that I actually saw quite recently. It's this one of uh, having this entrepreneur on a lion and everybody's looking at him going, wow, what a, what a brave guy. He's, uh, he's like mastered this lion. He's riding the lion. And meanwhile, you, you're thinking, I'm on a lion. How did I get here? And is it going to eat me? Like, how do I get off safely? Um, so I think the metaphor explains uh, how, how we often feel as entrepreneurs. It's, Emotionally, it's, a, it's very turbulent. Uh, ups and downs are very extreme, which means moments of like extreme bliss uh, and also moments of being very alone. Uh, and no one talks about that kind of emotional strain that entrepreneurs get. And I think it's a taboo that shouldn't, that should be exposed. Um, yes, there is something really cool about uh, what we do. Uh, a lot of a lot of us are creating interesting new companies that are you know, transform the world and shopping experiences. But at the same time, it's a, it's a difficult journey and I think it's important to be mindful of that too. So I don't have any kind of like off the shelf tips, but I do have a few things that I like to follow as kind of best practices. I think one of the things is to, to remember to live um, that you are bigger than your company. You're not inside it, it's inside of you. A uh, famous book that I, that I really like, The E-Myth, talks about this a lot. Um, I think that, that helps us in dealing with overwhelm. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs do experience overwhelm all the time. So I think it's important to realize that you, your life, your, your purpose is bigger than the company. Um, so that allows you to spend time with family, to um, make sure that you have uh, people around you that you have to spend, with, spend time with, not just focusing only on your company. That's one thing. And then the other thing that I think is really important is to exercise. Uh, I think for a long time, I, I, I was a founder that just always said didn't, didn't have time to exercise, you know. Uh, but then I found, since I started swimming, um, that there was something beautiful about the time in, in the water where I was able to clear my mind and then the way I would feel the next day, I'd be far more motivated, far better, higher energy levels. So I think remembering to take care of yourself physically and mentally while being an entrepreneur is something that's very important. I guess my, my third tip, uh, and comes back to the way you, you grow as a, as a founder initially, it's just you and you're doing everything. I think the most important thing to remember is that successful companies are those that build great teams. It's not about yourself. 
Uh, it's not about getting the glory. It's about as, uh, finding great people, people that are even better than you and getting them to work in a cohesive way. Uh, a lot of investors, inv investors that have invested in us will always say, we'd rather invest in a B idea with an A team than, an, than a, uh, an A idea with a B team because execution is everything. Ideas are uh, abundant. I think everyone knows that social media is important. Uh, the question that we face or the challenge that we face is to try and figure out how to measure any efforts put into social media from the perspective of return on investment. This is what everyone's talking about, the challenges. So the way we've managed that kind of challenge of understanding how much energy to put into social media is to think of it in two ways. The first is what it does for the brand, and the second is what it does in terms of boosting sales. So when you, could, when you think about the brand on its own, um, it's always been the case that measuring your brand or the effectiveness in, in marketing on your brand is very, very challenging. So we just do it because we know it's important and, uh, and we, 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 we're thinking about it in very, very long term. So we're not trying to measure it month on month. We don't look at vanity metrics like followers. And, but what we do look at is um, what kind of conversations are happening on a very, very micro level, like, oh, one really good conversation happened here. And what does that conversation mean? And what happened to that person afterwards? And we use that as a, as a kind of metaphor or proxy for what we can imagine can happen at scale. So that's the one way. And then obviously there's the other way, which is super exciting and becoming ever more measurable, is can social media actually drive purchasing behavior, which is very trackable and, and uh, in our space quite interesting. So that, for me, is the really exciting part now. Um, some examples of that. We are a company that is very much based on our purchases come from where people show purchase intent, right? Typically, purchase intent can be found on Google search. People write engagement rings, they find them, they buy them. Uh, it's been very challenging for us to get purchase intent on Facebook. People don't go on Facebook to shop. They go there just to kind of you know, chat with their friends. However, Pinterest is a really good example. Pinterest has a search bar. People search for things. Uh, again, different to Instagram. They go there to hang out, get inspiration. They're not going there to shop. So these kind of discussions happen in our team quite a lot. And uh, I think being aware of what you're trying to achieve with social media is the message I'm trying to put across. Uh, there are different goals, and if you can focus on a specific goal for your company and find a way to track it and measure it, then you're doing well. But I think a lot of companies, especially more traditional ones, are doing social media to be reactive, and it's all about, oh, we have to do it because it's modern and, and, and we don't want to fall behind. I think that's the wrong approach. You, know, you should really have a good idea of why this is uh, important to you and which specific channels are the ones where your customers uh, uh, can find you. And that may, not, that, that may not always be Facebook, even though most people think of Facebook first when they think of social media. So, I mean, the question of what, what would I have done differently if I could do this again is like basically every day I have answers to that. Uh, there's probably a few things that I would have uh, considered beforehand. One of the main ones is understanding uh, how, how much of the stuff that you learn at university about what it means to, to run a business is uh, absolutely relevant for a startup, maybe a, specifically a tech startup. Uh, I would have spent a lot more time getting out of the office, as they say, and just speaking to people and trying to get a really, really good idea of A, who my customers are, how many of them are out there, and what is it specifically that they want. So much of our time is spent in the office making assumptions on those questions and answers when really, you know, just a few conversations with people who are relevant can often open up huge doors. So that's a major one for me. Um, it's uh, the, your, we we ha we live in this world where we think that our assumptions and beliefs are representative of reality or a very large part of it, and often it's not the case. So making decisions based on user testing, I do a lot more of that every day. I still think we can do that even more. So it's the kind of thing where even though I've learned the lesson, executing on that lesson is is not easy. Uh, but we are far more aware of it, and we do a lot more. Um, strategic changes in, in the business on the website based on those uh, real customer interactions. So a lot of things in, in being an entrepreneur that aren't discussed openly uh, and I think the reality of it is that it's challenging. It's, uh, it's, you need to be self-motivated every single day. You know, I find it um, hard to, to start a new routine like a diet or an exercise but there's nothing like getting up every single day tired or not tired and knowing that this customer is relying on you to design and deliver their rings and it's for such a romantic and special moment in their lives that 
the kind of exposure you have, they're so sensitive about this purchase that there's no uh, room for error. You have to you have to get it right, and that kind of pressure can build up over time. You know, all these customers passing on that pressure to you. Uh, so I think you know I could probably go on a long time about the realities, but it's it is different, but it's still totally worth it. It's, uh, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. So we started the company. Uh, Three and a half years ago, uh, initially, we were completely bootstrapped. You know, just raised a little bit of money from friends and family who, uh, again, didn't so much back the ideas. They backed the people. They wanted to support us. We've, since then, we've gone on to raise uh, you know, venture capital as well. So, as investors, we saw there was an opportunity to really expand this business, uh, put their money behind us as well. Uh, we raised money from crowd investments. So there was about 250. Uh, angel investors who, who came in and contributed to that round of investment. Uh, and the vision now is really uh, expand this offering to more people. 15, 20 years ago, a uh, large number of people wouldn't have known or even thought that custom design was possible. And technologies like 3D printing and CAD design have now made this possible. And it's our kind of purpose to um, make this product this design experience accessible to, to people all over the world because we think everyone wants to tell us a special story with this with this product. Um, you know, when people get engaged, it's this very special moment in their lives where they connect and, and jewelry and the engagement ring has always been a symbol for that. So it's now the next step is, uh, is expanding and having more people, more happy couples on the, on the happiness wall. So uh, one of the things that we that we found works really well for our business is having a showroom. Uh, we're in the showroom right now. Uh, as you can imagine, for an online business selling an average order value ring, uh, ranging between one to three and a half thousand pounds, most people want to touch and feel uh, the product, uh, meet meet someone to advise them. This is not a you know this is not shopping on Amazon. And for that reason, we've always found that the showroom helps. Of course, if you're not based in London, you don't have access to the showroom. So our model for growth in the next year will be to um, choose one or two cities, maybe in the US, considering New York, and uh, expanding our showroom and offering to, uh, to those locations. Uh, and we believe that that will be a, a, a source and a channel for growth for us, but also boosting that conversion rate in uh, those other countries, um, giving customers the opportunity to build a trust and a rapport with our brand.